I'm now delighted to be joined by the winner of the Borthgosh Energy Sportsbook of the Year, Mayo football legend. Please welcome Cora Staunton. Thank you. Thank you. Right, let's see if I get this right. Four senior All-Ireland Championships with Mayo, six All-Ireland Club titles, 11 All-Star awards. And if that's not enough, you're posed to, of course, dominate in Australian football. But you've now gone and won the Board Gosh Energy Sportsbook of the Year with your sportsbook. Yeah, um, I'm a bit shocked now, to be honest. I'm obviously delighted. Um, you know, I suppose when, you're, when you go to write a sports book, you know, probably this time last year, I barely knew it was such thing as a sports book of the year. But um, yeah, it's a huge honour. And I suppose being the first female GA star to do it, it's um, a bigger honour that uh, obviously a woman has won another award tonight. We're all familiar with your amazing sporting yeah. achievements on the field. But one of the things that strikes me is that your book is kind of the first woman's story from the GAA. And here you are now with your award winning book. But was that something that mattered to you? Because I know you're competitive. You like to break <laughs> barriers maybe a little bit. Was that something that mattered to you or was it something you wanted to do anyway? No, it certainly wasn't something that mattered to me. You know, the book wasn't something I really wanted to do either. Um, you know, I was probably approached maybe two years ago to, to write the book and at the time I said no. Um, you know, I'm quite a private person and a shy person off the, off the field and, you know, was a, you know, the idea was mute to me again and eventually I said yes, but, you know, I suppose I, I've seen the importance of saying yes was that I've realised that I'm a role model for young kids, boys and girls growing up and I do a lot of work in schools and I've seen the importance that they have yeah, sports people to look, look up to and I decided, you know, that if I'm writing the book I want to try and inspire young boys and girls and, you know, since the book has come out two months ago, you know, I've had messages from parents and, and from kids themselves and that was my goal to inspire some, some young people and, you know, I know I've achieved that goal two months later. It really feels like we're having a room here tonight yeah. of just the most amazing, remarkable women who have just keep smashing through <laughs> barriers. It's, it's really wonderful and it's lovely to have you as part of it. But I wonder if part of the appeal of this book isn't even so much the sporting part of it, but the personal bit, the maybe the bit we didn't know about you before, and particularly talking about your mum and losing her and what influence and effect that had on you as a, as a sports person but as a person yeah was that tough to yeah I that? suppose yeah I suppose that you know when I went to start the, the early stage of the book I found it really challenging um you know my mom is 20 years dead um this year and and I found it you know I had never talked about it you know you not? no you know after mom died we're, we're from a, a country family there's, a, there's eight kids you know life just moved on and you got on with things you went back to school and you just life moved on and the years rolled in and we're not the type of family that sits around talking we probably you know give out to each other more than anything <laughs> else so you know I didn't sit and ever talk to anyone about it and I suppose the first time I had to do when I sat down with my ghostwriter Mary and remember um you know the, the time so mom was alive when she was sick and she obviously was sick for three years yeah she, she was yeah she had advanced uh, cancer and she did you know quite a hard battle with it and just to remember back it was how vivid all the memories even though it's 20 years ago that she could remember back to it and I suppose when I, when I remember back, you know, I think, you know, a lot of the qualities that my mother had and characteristics that she had, you know, um, were, were, were quite similar. And, you know, she was a very stubborn woman. She was, you know, very clean and wanted, she would be very driven. And, you know, she's, I have a lot of them char characteristics that she have. So just even going back over certain things that you don't ever talk about and to have to sit down and talk with your ghostwriter. You know, I honestly felt the first few sessions that I had was like attending counselling. You know, I've never attended counselling. I don't know what it feels like, but it felt like that. I was in, uh, physically and mentally drained after the first few sessions. But, yeah, it, you know, it's nice that I honour mom in the book and, you know, people see what type of person she was and, um, you know, all I want to do every day, I take the field or whatever, you know, sport I'm playing, whether it's AFL in Australia or if it's Gaelic football or it's rugby or soccer, once I'm doing her proud, then, you know, I know my job is done. You talk as well about your dad, that he's still grieving, I think, in yeah. a very raw way. What was the reaction at home when you wrote the book? Were you kind of throwing it and running out the door? No, or? no not at all. I suppose um, my sisters would have been involved a little, a little bit in it, um, just to remember back times I couldn't. Um, you know, my father is a, is a very shy, quiet man. He doesn't say too much. But, you know, I know underneath it all, he, he's very proud. And, you know, while he mightn't say it to me, he'll certainly say it to the <laughs> neighbours or when he's in the local pub. So, yeah, it, it's probably hard for him. I'm sure it's been a difficult read for him. But again, you know, he's not going to come out and say that. But, um, you know, I, I'm sure the overwhelming feeling for him is proud. And, you know, um, I have a lot of young, um, young nieces and nephews that are, you know, seven and eight now and they're reading it. And, you know what, they're learning a little bit, little about, bit about their granny now that they never knew about. So, you know, it's lovely to sit with them and, and to find out from them. And they, they keep asking questions. And, you know, every day she's in the memory in our family. So, which is great, 20 years on, she, we're, we're still talking about her. So... <laughs> Woo! 
You might remind me of your mum's name. Mary. Mary. Yeah. So, yeah. OK. Your dad, have you told him yet about the award? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't tell him about the awards. I just literally came out. Um, I head off to Australia in the morning, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> back down to Mayo tonight and back up to Dublin Airport and off to Australia for, for seven months to play. Um, so, yeah, so I, I'll speak to him in the morning before I head off to Australia. This is heavy for the hand luggage, can I just say? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think I might I think I might stay in Carnacun for the time that I'm away. But um, as I said, it's a huge honour to win something like this. You know, I'm up against people in, in the room like Andy Lee and David Fitzgerald. And these are people, you know, that I look up to hugely as sports people. Rosemary Smith, in, another one, you know, a, a remarkable um, icon for women's sports. So, you know, there's loads more that, you know, to be in a, even a category with them was a, a win for me. Never mind winning the book, um, the award on top of it. So, you know, I'm very grateful. And is there space in the mantelpiece in Cornicon <laughs> for this, considering uh, all your medals? Yeah, m m all, all my trophies and stuff still go to my, my dad's house. You know, I don't really keep any of them in he my house. He gets to dust them. He gets to dust them, yeah. <laughs> so they all go there. But yeah, I'm, I'm sure um, I'm sure he'd be proud of place in, in, his, in his home house. And when he has visitors in the next couple of months, I'm sure he'll be showing them. Cora, I think what you've written is, because I know it was a stretch for you to write the story, it wasn't easy. And we're such fans of yours on the pitch, but also off the pitch now as well. Huge congratulations. Thanks a million. Thank you. <laughs>